Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Autosomo DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of an early Bronze Age individual from the Levant from Jordan. But first let's learn a little bit about the early Bronze Age Canaanites, right? In the early Bronze Age the inhabitants of Canaan built uh, the first walled towns. These towns were not large, populations seldom exceeded 2k and uh, the largest had perhaps 3k to 5k inhabitants. The evolution of urban societies had a profound effect on the civilization in Canaan. The clear boundaries of the cities and the row as regional centers represented a new concept in communal organization. Families lived within the city walls and houses clustered around courtyards. Differences in wealth existed but were not marked. Buildings that might qualify as palaces were almost non-existent. Around this time, pottery technology developed as the potter's wheel came into common use and methods for firing wares were better controlled. Metal weapons and tools were created by artisans in these urban centers and despite the terminology, it was copper that was used in the creation of these metal tools and not bronze. Uh, now, contact with the first pharaohs of, excuse me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, of Egypt played a role in stimulating the growth of these wild towns. In Egypt, contemporary tombs contained pottery jars from Canaan, which were used to transport wild and olive oil. The existence of the heavily fortified city walls is evidence that this was not a peaceful period. Uh, by 2300 BCE, most of the towns in the southern Levant had been abandoned or reduced in size. Current evidence suggests that a global climate change and drier conditions were the basic cause of these social changes. In addition, there was a uh, gradual decline in trade with Egypt towards the end of this period. Under this strain, the specialized agricultural economy of early Bronze Age Canaan collapsed. In order to survive, people turned to small-scale farming and pastoral nomadic lifestyle. Uh, urban communities disintegrated and disappeared. For the next 350 years, walled towns ceased to play a role in Canaanite life. Okay, now that we've uh, moved past all the boring history stuff, let's move on to his genetics. Um, he is predicted to have brown eyes, Greek-shaped nose, and black hair with my Nashakot tool. Uh, with Wysek also predicted to have brown eyes and hair, but with Snipper Free, uh, Snipper Free predicts him to have brown eyes, red hair, and intermediate skin. And the reason he's predicted to have red hair is because he had some uh, ginger variants in MC1R. He had BH1, blue eye haplotype 1. Um, he was heterozygous for BH4, which is sort of this rare Mediterranean mutation for light pigmentation eyes. Uh, no BH2, so no blue eye haplotype 2, which is the typical mutation responsible for light eyes in Europeans. Because he's got some other light coloring variants in OCA2, you can actually make the prediction for him to have brown eyes instead of dark brown eyes. So you can see he's scoring 54% brown and 33% dark brown hair. He is heterozygous for the prodofrenentine pro variation of DRD2, which means intermediate amount of uh, D2 dopamine receptors in the brain. And um, he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1 also of DRD2, which is a typical genotype for a, uh, like basically all humans. Now, um, so lower risk of ADHD, lower risk of Parkinson's is what that means. And he's got the warrior genotype in Komsval met variation, which means met met. Now the warrior genotype is actually a stereotypically European genotype. This is something you associate with Europeans. And the implications of this genotype is that he would have a really slow reuptake, reuptake of dopamine, which means more dopamine building up in his system. And as you can read, advantage in memory and attention tasks. Uh, he does not have the sociopathic gene. In fact, he has quite the opposite of the sociopath gene. So definitely... Uh, was a very empathetic individual, at least based on his genotype here in OXTR. Uh, when it comes to EDAR, he did not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, uh, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. He did not have the European mutation for lactose persistence, but that's not surprising because he's not a European, only Europeans have this mutation. And uh, he did not have any variants that protect against myopia, which means probably was nearsighted or farsighted, had some issue with sight. Now, moving on to polygenic traits, he had a high risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, he's got a high risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, he's got a high risk score for Parkinson's disease. He's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got a pretty low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Um, he's got a low risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a pretty low risk score for type 1 diabetes and a average risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with Eurogene's K13 on GED match. Now, uh, to me, this looks like a Levantine result because I see East Mediterranean, mostly East Mediterranean. I know this is a Levantine uh, group to score. So to me, this looks like a Levantine result. But with the Oracle, actually, uh, the Oracle knows better. According to the Oracle, he's more similar to 
uh, more south uh, Yemenites or people in the south of Arabian subcontinent, right? So he's more southern than Levant. Uh, he's also closest to Saudis on G25 too. This is what he scores with MZLPK11. Modern, what's interesting is he's actually scoring 17.5% EHG and EHG on this calculator actually represents Caucasus hunter-gatherer uh, affinities. So he's got 17.5% of Caucasus hunter-gatherer like ancestry, which is not, not anything unusual for somebody from the Middle East. He is closest to British Roman, which is a Middle Eastern person from Britain, uh, who lived in Britain in the Roman period. And uh, this is what he scores with Pun DNA LK10. Here we can see he's scoring 24.5% CHG. He's got quite a lot of Caucasus related, uh, Caucasus related shift. He is closest to Saudis here, followed by Egyptians. So once again, we see he's more Southern than what's typical for um, people in 11th today. He is actually getting modeled as a mixture of, there is a Lebanese plus Bedouin, yeah, so Le relative to the Lebanese, he is more shifted towards Bedouins in the south of the Arabian subcontinent. This is what he scores with uh, Pan DNA LK12. Here we can see mostly three categories that he's scoring, Near East, Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, and Anatolian Neolithic, the biggest one being Near East. Uh, with the Oracle, he is closest to Yemenite Jews. Once again, it's pretty similar to what we've seen with G25. And he's getting modeled actually as a mixture of Yemenite Jew plus some kind of uh, Mediterranean or North e Northern Middle Eastern or Mediterranean, right? And this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, mostly Natufian here, but what's interesting is he's scoring 15% West European Hunter Gatherer here, which probably is explained by the Hunter Gatherer affinities in Anatolian Neolithic farmers. And with the Oracle, he is closest to Levant BA, Bronze Age Levant. Uh, which is what he is, and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Yemenite Jew plus Anatolian Neolithic or Saudi plus Anatolian Neolithic, so he is more shifted towards Anatolian Neolithic farmers relative to the southern Middle Eastern people. This is what he scores with Gedrosia K3. He's scoring 8% Sub-Saharan African. Now, some of it is due to actual Sub-Saharan African admixture because you've seen with um, Ancient Eurasia K6, he did score 5% SSA, but some of it it's just due to affinities that these Middle Eastern people have towards Sub-Saharan African black people. The same way European hunter-gatherers have some affinities towards East Asians, uh, well, these Middle Eastern people have some affinities towards Sub-Saharan Africans. Thank you guys for watching until the end. You can download his genome in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And also, leave a like on this video and subscribe to me if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube.